Okay, I'm just going to jump into Pix Insight and show you how I uh, combine my narrowband data. Um, this was on the California Nebula. Um, I'm just going to download some uh, a project that's got all of my sort of shortcuts that I use a lot of on the right hand side here. Um, so I use them often. Um, I say I took uh, data on the California Nebula with my portable rig and I took hydrogen alpha and oxygen 3 so what I'm going to do is I'm, I've got uh, two sessions with the hydrogen alpha and oxygen 3 and then there's a there's a single session there and I'm gonna I'm gonna bring that in and I'm gonna make that a false uh, sulfur 2 level so um, just wanted to have a, a play about with some different ideas really um, so I'm just gonna rename these nice and simple S H and O so we'll just um, so they're just uh, a little bit neater on the screen and easier to identify so you can just right click on that side panel and do that And then obviously double click on them to bring them up and then I'm just doing a quick stretch to see what I have on each of them. Okay, so the HA is looking nice and as I say I've only got uh, O3. I was going to do an HOO but I think I'll um, have a little play with, a, with an SHO blend using one of the uh, the weaker oxygen as a as a sulfur two level it might help me with my stars a little bit so uh, we just do a dynamic crop so um, we'll just reset that we use the hydrogen one I think to do it on hold on I'm trying to do it on this one on the right here I think I'm getting myself a bit a bit mixed up there we go we're on the hydrogen that's better so what we're going to do is first of all just crop this and uh, once I've got all of those uh, dodgy artifacts on the edges, which I've got from dithering out the way, we'll uh, right, so we just bring that up there, that's good. So then what we do is we just drag this off onto the screen and that then can be used for all of them. We'll just give it a name of crop and then we can close a dynamic crop and then we can literally just drag that to each one. And then if we do have any problems and we're starting again or bringing in any other images, we've got the crop there saved so we can use that again. So we just stick that down there. Okay, so let's have a look at what we've got here. Nice, that's got some nice, 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 uh, nice detail in that. Okay, so we've got the dynamic background extraction tool. So um, I'm going to just open this up and I'm going to make uh, a pattern, make them a bit bigger, I want, them, I want the squares bigger than the default, just so we're capturing a bit more of that background. Um, let's have a look here, okay, so we'll do a division and then we'll do a subtraction for each one just checking my settings at the moment there we go I'm not sure about that there's uh, I think a few fewer will be better it's, uh, and also I want to make them bigger So I'm, I'm still very much learning uh, my way with Pix Insight. Um, I do like somebody uh, online had a video and um, there's a couple of things I've I've followed from uh, from him uh, using the yellow um, markers there, so they stand out nice on the background and. Uh, um, this, the guy from uh, Entering Into Space also uses uh, colour masks for stretching, which I 
I like. I, I use them too. So um, yeah, he, he's got some good techniques, and I, I've, I've taken some of his techniques and I've used uh, some other techniques um, for star removal and putting the stars back in later. Um, one of the things I haven't really played with a lot on uh, Pix Insight is uh, noise reduction. Um, apart from the SC and R, which I like to use to sort my stars out, um, I do use um, Topaz Denoise AI, uh, which I like a lot. So at the moment, that's what I'm using for my uh, noise reduction. So uh, you'll see what I do with that in a bit when I get to that stage. So this isn't looking bad. So if I drag this off now, I can use this for all three images. Um, let's uh, run that through. Okay. We can just stretch that there. Close that down. And if I double click that again, I should be able to do a subtraction on the same thing. And that should be dynamic background extraction. Uh, so again on this one, same same bits, and we're gonna reset it there and restretch and then we'll do a subtraction let's just, just have to close this down every time oops I must say I do like pick it pick look picks insight but I do find some of the workings very strange um, that's better some of it I like, and some of it work. You know, you, you can type, you know, repeating uh, processes, and like this works quite well. But I just have to double click it and reset it every time, rather than just dragging it to each one. Um, that doesn't seem to work. So I do try things out. Maybe I'll have to. I've got a book. What book did I buy? I bought um, Inside Picks Insight, which uh, it's been really good actually. Um, I think I need to, might need to read a bit more. Let's uh, just get these down. So that's dynamic background extraction done on all three. Okay. And there we have them all. So they, they look they look okay. It's not a lot on the O3 to be totally honest with you. It's all in the HA, but um, I'm sure there's something on the O3. So let's uh, put a permanent stretch on all these. Now, I know some people uh, keep these in a linear state um, and then combine them and then stretch what they've combined. Um, for me, it I just always seem to get a better better result if I stretch them first and then combine them it just uh, for some reason uh, it just seems to be um, a, a better result but um, I don't know I'll, I'll keep playing about with it and try different ways and if I find a better way maybe I'll go for it but at the moment I'm finding just stretching them first is a better way uh, before putting them together so right that's all three of them stretched we can just shrink down that let's bring them up again okay yep they're all looking okay okay there's some lovely detail on that HA it really is right now we're gonna might as well just use channel combine to start with so we'll just put the HA in the green, the S2 in the red, and the oxygen into the blue. 
and let's have a look at that. Okay. Nice and green, which is uh, normal. As I say, we've got the uh, magenta stars going on. So what I like to do here is invert the image and then run SCNR just on default. And you'll see the, the green stars there go like a bluey gray, dark blue. And then, oops. And then when we go back to it, you'll see now that the stars are a nice, a nice white color, good color there. So that looks looks much better. I'll just do a neutralization on that. Okay. So these are going to be my stars, and um, when I've finished all of my uh, color stretching, these are going to be. Um, reintroduced to my image so uh, let me just have a look here this is my HA there we go and that's going to be my detail so we'll just give this mob stars and then we know what that is and we can save this now as a TIFF now uh, we need to save it as a 16-bit TIFF And then we can put this, use this later to put the stars back into the image because we're going to use star net plus plus to remove the stars. Now the HA, I need to remove the stars from both images. Um, so let's just remove the stars from the color image first of all. Um, I have done a video. Um, on how to uh, turbocharge Starnet++. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, there are, there's a CUDA toolkit, a, 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 oh, I can't even speak, a CUDA toolkit program that you can download, and it will really accelerate the process of Starnet++, where it uses your graphics card, not your central processing unit, and it's a lot faster. Um, so well worth doing so um, if you would check out my other videos you'll see that video uh, in them okay let's just take out the stars on the HA um, as I say you can see how quick it's working um, before I did the process of, of downloading the CUDA um, this used to take five minutes plus to remove the stars um, and now as you can see it's it's less than a minute there we go we've got the stars removed from them both okay um, actually thinking about it I really need an original of the um, HA in a minute right we'll just rename this starless um, oops I forgot it needs underscoring because you can't have spaces you gotta have an underscore there in there. Will it allow that? Yes, it will. Thank you very much. Okay. Yes, with the HA, I've got a nice stylish one there. But I do need. So let's drag off a clone of the stars. Shrink that down, then I've, I can keep that. And if I do need to go back at any point, I can use that. Now, let's go back to this. Um, we'll rename this. So it's good to keep, uh, you know, rename things so you know you know exactly what you've got. And this is going to be the detail on our picture. Just uh, put that over there. Right. Okay. So, what we're going to do now. Um, is we're going to work on this uh, this color. So I like to use the color masks. So uh, it's good to set a blur of about three. And there we go. There's the color mask there, and the letter at the end there denotes the color. So that's good. Oops, script. And a mask. Uh, okay, yeah, 
So blur it. So I always do like a magenta, a green, a cyan, and a yellow. Um, sometimes, depending on how I've mixed the um, the colours, you might not get an awful lot uh, of detail. And in that instance, I might I might not use that mask. So you can just uh, you can just see how how much detail it's grabbed to see whether it's going to make any changes to your picture. But I do find that you have good control of the colours. You can see there's there's an example there with the with the yellow. It isn't um, really picked up much. Okay, one more, and this will be uh, magenta. Okay, just a few moments to get that up. A little bit of background on that, but not a lot. Okay. Right, so we bring up our curves adjustment there, and we can put our mask on there by dragging across onto there. At the top of the screen, you've got show or hide mask. If I get to the right bit, of course, which is to the right there, I'm looking at the wrong bit of the screen. There it is. Hide that mask. And what we can do now is bring up the preview and we can play with the colours. So with the magenta, we just want to take the red out of the background if there is any. And maybe bring the background down a bit. So it's not done an awful lot on that because the mask wasn't very strong. It depends on the mix. But I always start with that. So we'll do what I normally do. Okay. And this is the green. So nice strong signal here so we bring up the preview and we'll actually take some of the green out and this is what brings out bringing the green down brings out the orange now bring the bring that bringing the green down also takes some of the brightness out of it so you do sometimes have to give a bit of rgb to push up that color so we'll look what that blue is doing okay sometimes i pull it down sometimes i push it up depends how it goes and then the c Bit there is really nice for pushing out those dark reds. Okay, and we're just going to push up the RGB because when you take the green out, it does dull the picture down a little bit. Okay, so we'll just start with that. Let's have a look at the cyan. It doesn't look like there's any cyan in it when you look at it, but obviously there is. Okay. Now with an SHO, this is the point where you push the blue up. Let's see what that's looking like. Okay. Pull the green down. No, don't like that. Mm-hmm. So sometimes it is a little bit of playing about with things. Let's see what they do. Oh that's oh that's nice, I like that. Okay. That's got a lot. That's that's nice. It's good to just play about sometimes. Let's have a look at that. Um, yeah, we'll just push that red bit. Oh yes. So that makes it nice and golden. I do like that. Okay. So what we can do now. Not the show mask, we didn't want to do that, we wanted to take the mask off, good. So that's the mask on. I say don't worry about those little flecks there of the stars that haven't quite been removed, because when you put the stars back, they'll that, you won't see them, they'll be gone. Um, let's just have a look at the general picture here. So, let's just have a little stretch, let's see if we can bring out some more cover, a bit less curvage, try and get a bit of contrast into the image. Do like colour on that. There's a bit of lightness here just to see how that looks. So everything is a preference. Um, I sometimes find it very difficult to replicate something I've made sometimes I'll I'll go ahead and and then I'll come back and go well I'll have another go at that and it's completely different okay I'm just going to have a look at this 
H8 um, under the histogram. I just want to try and make make sure the details are good, and sometimes just by upping the contrast and bringing the blacks down a bit, push that up, and we're just trying to get the details to pop a bit there. That looks quite good. Yeah, I like that. Okay. What am I doing? Close that preview. That's it. <coughs> Okay, so under script we've got the um, this, uh, this tool that brings out the dark structures, makes them pop a bit more, which is always nice. TIFF file on that. So we wanted to save that as a TIFF in the same place, so they're together. Now what I'm going to do is call up my AID noise. Oh, that was what I was last working on. Find the file. There it is. And it's got these four different modes on the auto. I find the AI auto very good. Um, I normally favour the low noise. And I think that's been developed specifically for this kind of uh, photography so let's just have a look at that have a look at the different details yeah I do like that it's very very li little amount of uh, noise reduction required on the uh, HA sharpening is quite high though uh, okay let's just run that and what it will do is it will save a new file uh, with the name that we've got there, but with denoise uh, written next to it, we can uh, shrink that now because the one we're actually going to open the new file when it's uh, when it's when it's finished doing the uh, the work doesn't take too long, and um, you'll most be asking, well, what about the noise in the color image? Because that's where a lot of the noise is. Well, I'll show you what I'm going to do with that in a moment, but we'll sort out this. Uh, HA level layer and this layer is going to become our illuminance layer and it's going to give us all the detail for the image so there we go that's the noise reduction done so we can open that now now when we open it we want to put it in as a luminance layer but the problem is it's an R it actually comes in even though it's black and white it comes in as an RGB layer so we have to extract the luminance so that's the first thing we do is a box up there at the top left that extracts the luminance component we can then remove the uh, other one and there we have the luminance component of the denoised HA which is going to become as I say our luminance right so we then go to convolution and what we do is we blur the color and what this will do is it will actually remove the noise because it will just blur it out and you can blur it quite you know quite aggressively it's not a problem because the detail is in the luminance layer so we just blur that down and then we go to LRGB. We make sure the RGB is unchecked. We put the luminance there. We tick chrominance noise and then we drag it on top. And PixInsight will perform what can only be described as a magic trick. So at the moment, we've got this blurred color splodge and we're now going to put this luminance layer on top which is the HA and you will suddenly see all the detail pop out so and then all we've uh, really left to do is put the stars back and then any tweaks that we want to do so there you go you can see all the detail start to come out now it still doesn't look great but one of the main reasons for that is there's no stars in it. So we can now save this. This will be our, our, our starless 
um, version. And then again, 16 bit. Okay. And then we can shrink this down in case we need to go back. Close that. Right, if I open Photoshop, if I can find it, never can. Here we go. What we can then do is open the stars, the original one that we saved, and that file that I just saved, the, the star list. So we just scroll down here. Ooh, we're back on the uh, tadpoles, which I was working on the other day. So we go California Nebula. And the bottom there. Okay. You can see there's a lot of APP files there. They're the files I stack my data in. The, the program I stack my data in, I just find the APP uh, nice and easy to work with. Okay, so there's our style. So what we do is we uh, control A, control C, and go to our other one and control V. And that puts it in there. And then we change the blending mode to lighten. And there you go. And it just puts those stars straight back in. Look at that. I mean, it does such a nice job. The stars don't get affected by any of your stretching or colour changes. They're just, they're just, just left as they were right at the beginning, which I always find just. Uh, I don't have to do much with them at all. I just think they look great. Okay, let's go into Camera Raw now. I like Camera Raw. I think you can make a lot of very good subtle changes to a picture in Camera Raw and get the balance exactly where you want. Um, and what I love about Photoshop is that everything happens instantly as you as you tweak it. So you can get a real good feel for what you're after. Let me push the vibrance up a bit here. That's, that's not too much. Saturation. Sometimes I go down with the saturation. Sometimes I come up. Depends how I feel. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now the dehazing, clarity, and texture. We can try and bring some of that detail out. Make it pop a bit. That's nice. It's looking nice. I, do, I love the colour. Very happy with that. Right. Okay. So okay on that. That's good. Yeah, that looks nice. I like that. So the background is a little bit of noise. So. I've got Carboni's uh, astronomy tools here. Uh, so deep space noise reduction. It'll mask out the nebula. Ah, oh, that's better. That's smoothed out the background a bit. And we've also got a spike there, so that'll be okay. Let's have a look at that as well, just see what that does. The nice thing as well with this is if anything is too aggressive, you can always um, lower the opacity of the uh, layer. Um, so it doesn't uh, degrade the picture too much at all. Right. I've rotated the image now and uh, just made it a bit more contrasty so the background's a bit darker. But I much prefer the image this way up. So I'm really happy with this image uh, at the moment. But um, a little... Uh, shout out to my friend Leon who uh, told me of a tool in PixInsight which helps on certain uh, images bring, really make certain details pop out so um, the tool I'm going to use if we go under processes all processes it's called local histogram equalization um, if you call it up you, you get some some defaults um, the defaults are here if I was to apply this it's um, way too strong. It, 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 it almost makes this look uh, rid ridiculously like a cartoon. So um, I'm going to just show you the settings that he gave me, uh, which if you'd like to copy down, uh, feel free. So I'll drag this on and apply. It takes uh, a few minutes to uh, work through. It's quite intensive. So I'll fast forward this video to the end.
Uh, I uh, seem to have upset my computer a little bit. I pressed the button and uh, my uh, stylist picture has disappeared and is now white. I'm sure it will come back once this process is finished. It'll just reload the image. There we go. Right, so let's uh, just stretch this out and make it a bit bigger. And we can show you what that process has done. So, oh, get off there. Okay, so that was it before. As I say, some really nice detail here, but the process we've just done, the local histogram equalization, really makes those details pop out. And I like that a lot. I really do like that. That's much, that, that's really, I mean, that really gives it some punch. And for this image, it works really well. I mean, some images that could be too much, but I actually really like that. It makes it look like a, 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 a real fiery cloud. I like that a lot. So there you go. That's uh, that's my rough sort of processing. Um, I hope it helps. Um, if you do have any questions, please ask me. I'm more than happy to uh, share share my knowledge, what I've got. Um, and if there's anything that you'd like to tell me that could uh, help me along my along the way, like uh, Leon telling me about the uh, local histogram equalization tool, please let me know in the comments. And uh, thanks ever so much, and see you again soon. Bye now.